Hi everyone, uh, just made it back in time for Tuesday Club. I uh, wouldn't want to miss that, and uh, not especially when we've got all this exciting stuff like we have tonight. We've got a game, uh, we've got Andrew telling us more about the life of Jesus, and uh, Lucy's bringing us another science slot. But uh, first of all, it's singing with John. Well, good evening again, boys and girls. Great to be with you again this evening, and um, today we're going to be getting a, a few songs done to warm up, get those voices going. And we'll start with one that I think we will all know. So join in, big loud voices, let's have a go. Well done, well done. A good start. Let's see how we get on with the next song. Okay, the next song reminds us that we need a really, really good foundation to build our lives upon. So join in and let's see how this one goes. Big loud voices, here we go. <laughs> Well done, thank you very much for joining in and we'll have one more song before we hand over. Well boys and girls, for this last song I think we will do a song about the crocodile. The crocodile coming to snap you up. So on your feet, big loud voices and here we go for this one. <laughs>
Well, thank you so much. Good singing. Good singing. Well done. And we're going to pass you over now. It's time for some games. OK, boys and girls, just taking a break from singing to uh, do a quick game. Now, um, uh, we have on our list this week to do uh, Knights, Cavaliers and Roundheads. Um, now, I'm not often in, in the room when you're doing this game, um, so I wasn't entirely sure which action went uh, with which. So in order to clarify the situation, our Grace Church outside broadcast vehicle uh, has gone round to uh, Billy and Molly's house and, uh, and they're going to be showing us exactly what the actions are that when I say knights, uh, one of you um, becomes a horse on all fours and the other just sits on the back very gently and carefully, of course. Um, round heads is where one of you just sort of gets down to one knee and the other one sits on the knee that's sticking up. And Cavaliers is where one uh, of the pair picks up the other one. I've never quite understood what that is all about, but that's apparently how it goes. Um, if you're on your own, uh, just do one of the actions, okay? So if you're a, if, if, if I say knights, just become the horse. If I say round heads, just do the one knee bit. And if I say Cavaliers, just imagine that you're picking someone up. If there's three of you, just, just sort it out. Okay, are you ready? So, uh, round heads. Are you there? You done it? Very good. Didn't quite see who was the last one there. This is, this is practice round. Okay, knights. All fours, one on the back. Okay, pretty good. All right, well done. Bethany and um, Maddie, that's great. Okay, um, knights. Uh -huh. Let's go, cavaliers. Pick that other one up, or brilliant. A bit slow there, Jacob. Seven CNR aren't doing that much better either. Come on, let's get on with it. Um, round heads. Okay, not too bad. Uh, Cavaliers. A few more. Knights. How you doing? Keeping up. Uh, quick fire now. Uh, Cavaliers. Round heads. Cavaliers. Knights. Round heads. Knights. And all four on the floor. Um, good. Well done. This term, we've been hearing about the life of Jesus and we're getting quite near the end. In fact, next week, you're going to hear about how Jesus died. Now, most people don't know exactly when they're going to die. Jesus' disciples didn't know that he was about to die, but Jesus did. Imagine that. Imagine knowing that you were going to die but facing it anyway because you knew that that death was going to bring good things for somebody else. It's a bit like this. Hi Eleanor. Hello. How would you like some chocolate? I'd love some chocolate, thank you. Okay, all you have to do to get that chocolate is let me hit you around the head with this teddy bear. Okay. You ready? Hold still. Great. Okay, now let's get you the chocolate. There we go, have some chocolate. Now, let's raise the stakes a bit. Hmm, right. How about if instead of a teddy bear, we use this? Look good? Um, 
Um, and instead of you getting the chocolate, I get the chocolate. So you ready? I'm going to hit you around the head with this frying pan so that I can have some chocolate. You ready? Oh, come back, come back! I want my chocolate! Crazy, huh? But Jesus was about to face something way worse than a frying pan. And he was going to do it so that someone else, anyone who believes in him, would get something way better than chocolate. They would get eternal life. That frying pan was coming. And Jesus could have run away like Eleanor did. But he didn't. He stood firm and he did it for the likes of you and me. So let's hear the next part of the story. It was a time of year called Passover when the people of Israel would celebrate being rescued from the Egyptians all those hundreds of years before in the time of Moses. And Jesus and his disciples were celebrating by having a meal together in an upper room in a house. During that meal, some remarkable things happened. First, Jesus showed he really knew that he was about to die. He took some of the food, some bread, broke it up and told his disciples, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And he took some of the wine and went, drink this. This is my blood shed for you. He was explaining what was about to happen, but the disciples must have just thought it was strange. He also said, one of you is going to betray me. They all went, no, not me, Lord, not me. Especially Judas. But Jesus knew and Judas knew that it was him. And so during the meal, Judas sneaked away to go and tell the chief priests that tonight was the night that they could arrest Jesus. Peter was particularly vocal about not being the betrayer. No, Jesus, I'll stick with you to the end. If you die, I'll die. I'm your man and I'll stick by your side. Jesus loved Peter and so it must have hurt him to say this, but he said, Peter, all that bravado, all that stuff you're saying, I'm afraid that before the end of this night, you are going to tell people that you don't know me three times. All this will happen before the cockerel crows in the morning. Peter probably didn't know what to think. He thought, oh, that's crazy. I wouldn't possibly do that. But that's what Jesus told him. After they left the upper room, Jesus and his disciples went to a place called the Garden of Gethsemane. As they walked along, they chatted and they sang songs. But when they got to the garden, things started to get serious. It was getting late and they were getting tired. But Jesus knew that that frying pan was coming. The next day he was going to die and he was scared. He asked his three best friends, Peter, James and John, to come with him a little bit away so that they could pray. He just said, I need to pray. Please keep me company. And he prayed and he had to make that decision. Was he going to run away like Eleanor ran away from the frying pan? Or was he going to stay so that his friends could get to be made right with God and go to heaven and be with him forever? There was a problem though. You see, Jesus' friends weren't perfect. Jesus was perfect because he was God. But his friends weren't perfect. They made mistakes. They were tired. They said, yeah, we'll come, we'll pray with you. But they just fell asleep. Poor Jesus. He was facing this amazing thing and his friends just fell asleep. Wake up, he said. Can't you just stay awake with me at this really difficult time? Can't you just keep me company? Yeah, okay, we'll keep you company. God, it's a... <sighs> Poor Jesus. I don't think he'd ever felt so alone. But then things started 
to get worse. Marching into the garden came a big group of soldiers with Judas. You see, Judas had gone to get the soldiers, he'd gone to betray Jesus, and he told them, you'll know which one to arrest because he will be the one I will greet with a kiss. Judas went up to Jesus and he went, Master, Mwah. Judas, you betray me with a kiss, Jesus said, and then it all kicked off. The soldiers came in to arrest Jesus. The disciples weren't sure what was happening. Remember, they were all sleepy. One of them woke up, I think it was Peter. He took a sword, he took a swing at one of the servants of the palace guards. He cut off his ear. Stop it, said Jesus. I'm going to go with them. He healed the servant's ear and he said, why do you come with sticks and swords to arrest me? You could have arrested me in the temple but you come and arrest me at night, I'll come with you, no more. At this, the soldiers took Jesus and started leading him away. The disciples panicked and they all ran off in different directions. And Jesus was alone and arrested. He was taken out the garden and to the house of the chief priest Caiaphas. At Caiaphas's house, the chief priest and the other teachers of the law were waiting. They were waiting to have a trial. But it was the middle of the night. <laughs> what a strange time to have a trial. But they were desperate to get rid of this Jesus. And so they had this sham trial with different people coming up and saying, yeah, we think he's bad. No, we think he's terrible. And lots of people making up lies about the things Jesus had done until a couple of them said something that was real. They said, ah, Jesus, he said that he could rip down the temple and build it up again in three days. Now, little did they know that when Jesus had th said that, he was talking about himself and how he was going to die and raise back to life. But the priests and the people at the trial went, <gasps> listen, that's blasphemy. We need to have this man killed. Meanwhile, out in the courtyard of Caiaphas's house, Peter, Jesus' disciple, had been following them. See, although he'd run away, he really wanted to help his friend and he'd followed him to find out what was happening. He'd gone into the courtyard of the chief priest's house and he was trying to see what was going on at the trial. But then a servant girl saw Peter. Maybe she'd seen some of Jesus' miracles and she went, Hey, I know you. You're Jesus's friend. No, no, not me, said Peter, and he shuffled off to a different part of the courtyard. But then another servant girl went, no, no, you are. You're Jesus's friend. No, not me. I swear, I swear. I, I've never been anywhere near the man. Who, Jesus who? And Peter moved to somewhere else. And then a third person went, now you've got a Galilean accent. Galilee, that's where Jesus comes from. You're from Galilee as well. You must be his friend. I'm not, said Peter. And at that point, the cock crowed and Peter remembered what Jesus had said in the upper room. And he felt so terrible. And then he ran away. And so the night ended. Jesus under arrest and convicted by a kangaroo court. The disciples all run away. Judas betraying a man that he had once followed. It was a dark time and it was only going to get darker. But you'll hear more about that next week. Before, in two weeks time, you'll hear why it was all worth it. We're not going to do a normal memory verse this week. Instead, I'd like you maybe to get an adult to help you look up a verse in the Bible. That verse is John chapter 3 verse 16 and you probably already know it. The reason I want you to look at that verse is it's a really good verse for helping us to understand why Jesus was willing to go through 
what he went through. Why he let the frying pan of his death hit him in the face so we could get the chocolate of eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him won't die but will have eternal life. John chapter 3 verse 16. Go and see if you can find it in the Bible and maybe talk to an adult about what it really means. Bye for now. Hi boys and girls. So in today's science lot we are going to make a carbon snake. How are we going to do that? Well we're going to use some different ingredients, we're going to make a mixture and then we're going to make a chemical reaction happen using fire. It's going to be awesome. So let's take a look at what we managed to create. Now, make sure you do not try this at home. There are some dangerous chemicals and I wouldn't want you to put yourselves in danger. So do not try this one at home, but enjoy this science slot by watching. So what do I need to do? I'm going to take four teaspoons of this white granulated sugar and put it in my cup. And I'm also going to take one teaspoon of this bicarbonate of soda. Mix that all together in my cup, and we're nearly ready to go. So, first, I'm going to take some of this fluid and put it into my sand. It needs quite a lot. Next, because the sand's wet, I'm going to then make a well in the middle. I'm going to put a bit more of my fluid in there. I'll make it a bit of a bigger well. And what I'm going to do is pour my mixture into that hole. Okay, brilliant. Well, next up is the exciting part. Definitely don't try this at home, boys and girls. We're going to light the mixture and we're going to see what happens. Keep watching. Let's see what happens as the flames burn the mixture. See it growing from the middle. Let's zoom in, shall we? Watch as these strange blobs grow out of the centre of my mixture. snake or a creature. Very strange. But science is so cool, isn't it boys and girls? Let's watch it grow some more.
Wow. Look at that. I can tell you, the smell is very strong right now. Our carbon snake is growing. Because there's a chemical reaction going on. Let's zoom in on the action, shall we? Watch how it grows out of the mixture that we made earlier. Wow, look how much it's created. Well, chemistry is awesome, isn't it, boys and girls? Today we made a carbon snake, and it was because a chemical reaction was happening when we burnt the sugar and that bicarbonate of soda together. And what did we make? This crazy thing! A carbon snake! Amazing! Now, boys and girls, there were some dangerous chemicals used in this one, so I wouldn't recommend trying it at home. But I hope you really enjoyed this week's science slot. Have a great week, won't you? And we'll see you next time for some more Tuesday Club online. Bye for now!